man. Gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the 124th ever episode of the next podcast. I'm Alex. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pokekill. Guys, we're all here. We're we back. Are all here. We've been gone for a minute, but that's because this office has been under construction, but now everything is here. Everything is solid. Everything is just static. It feels good. I'm psyched. I'm excited. I'm very, very, very hype. We're I'm, all three here. This I'm should be here. how it is going forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, right? It's great. Back in a schedule. It's great. Listen to that pristine sound quality. You hear that? <laughs> Damn, that's some good sound quality. Anyway, welcome back to the official podcast of the Dex on YouTube. This is a Pokemon podcast. If you are just joining us, thank you so much for being here. And uh, normally on this show, what we do is we do a little Pokemon news. We usually talk about some sort of hot button topic, but there's kind of a lot of news today, so we'll see about that. And uh, we also read fan answers, uh, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, before we do any of that, guys, how was your Pokemon week? Well... I mean, please, please go ahead. I mean, Kells will join me on this discussion. I guess I don't know if we're going to talk about this in news or, uh, but I have had a Pokemon week because Pokemon Duel came out last week uh, in America yeah. officially. Also known as Pokemon Coma Star. This is something we've been talking about on the show for like a year or two. And we're yeah, always just like, like every once in a while when there's an update, we'll talk about it a little bit. But like it finally came out for Europe. Well, I mean, we're going to talk about it, but it finally came out for your for English language markets and it was retitled the Pokemon Duel. And it's actually super fun yeah it's uh <laughs> for, for, if you don't know it's a mobile app and it's free to play um and basically it's like a little like kind of pseudo board game like you get different uh pieces that are different pokemon they're kind of like look like amiibo or something yeah yeah little, like, little, on little, a little, little figurines platform. on little stands and yeah uh, yeah full disclosure i have not uh i have not played this um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Drink bourbon in the soda right <laughs> before. I did a burp right in the Great. microphone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Remember back, kids, everybody. don't drink Dr. Pepper and drive. <laughs> We're not driving. Don't oh. drive. Well, I was, was going to say, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's involves a lot of strategy. I, I, I think the interface is actually pretty, um, pretty easy to understand, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it's, it's. It's kind of like about positioning intuitive, your pieces, intuitive. right? Intuitive. That's the word I was intuitive, thinking of. Yeah. Intuitive. The 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 interface is pretty intuitive. The tutorial is long as heck, and that, that was really boring. But yeah, if you can get past it, like it's a it's a really good time, and it's easy to easy to play and understand. And then it's easy to it, the learning curve on it is is good. So you guys yeah. have both been playing it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the vibe? What's the vibe on the on the money aspect? I okay. So I don't know how long this works for. I assume it's everybody who installs the game. First of all, if you plan on putting money into this game, please know that it stores your data client side, not server side. If you delete the app from your phone and you don't have your ID or support number saved somewhere, they mm. tell you to screenshot it on the main screen, uh, your stuff is just gone. That's what happened to me in Shuffle. This is how like a lot of the Japanese apps work a lot of the time. Which is, in my opinion, Total BS because if you put money into something, I think you should have I the expectation to have that thing sticking around. Have like I think a cloud that it's feature. fine as long as they make it really clear that you have to like before you delete the app. It's like, are you sure you want to delete the app? This set, da, this app will like you if you reinstall it, you won't have anything. Well, right. you know how like when you're playing a PS4 game that's like also on the Vita, you can like save it and then like press this button to like send the file to the cloud so you can sure. grab it from right. somewhere else. They should just have that. Right, but I mean like that that would be server side. It basically stores on on their side but it doesn't do that in this so just be warned about that if you plan on spending money however uh i've confirmed with kels that she also has this dash login bonus mm -hmm. um basically every day when you log in you get something uh typically it's gems which is the store currency for buying figurines um, oh and it should be noted you're on android and she's on apple That's right true. It, it is on both uh which is great but um, so you usually get like 15 gems or so, and it's 12 gems for a dollar, right? Yeah. In the in the actual like purchasing, like the microtransactions part. Mm -hmm. um, but the dash login bonus, which I believe lasts a week, don't quote me on that, but I, it's been about a week since I installed it and it just stopped working for me today for the dash login, is an extra login bonus. It's a daily login bonus and it gives you like anywhere between 50 and 100 gems, which is quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's like... Yeah, like a, a few dollars worth for for your gems. Right. And another thing I like about it too is that there's ton there's like tons of rewards. There's these time locked boxes that you can get, and even though like if you get one of these boxes, you have to wait like a certain number of hours before you can open it. Mm -hmm. Like still, you get those for free, like yeah. just for winning a match. Yeah, you just play an online match, and if you win it, you uh, 
uh, up to three slots you can store a box. And right. You can only have one box opening at a time, and you can spend gems if you want to open it quicker. And those boxes actually have bigger payouts than the purchased ones. Mm -hmm. um, they'll give you like multiple figures, and they'll give you plates, and they'll give you materials for. Okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna interrupt <laughs> myself there. The reason that the tutorial is long and boring is because this game is incredibly complex. Like, a quick tutorial would not cover it. Mm -hmm. I think they could have handled the, the tutorial better, but there's like, like, just giving you a rundown of combat would be confusing. Like, okay, so there's four types of, of attacks, right? There's white, yellow, purple, and blue, and then there's red, which is a miss. Um, and you have a wheel that you spin when you enter combat with another Pokemon, and so... White attacks, the higher number takes a win. A miss is always a loss. A blue blocks against everything. A purple beats everything except for a yellow, and yellow only beats purple or an attack of a lower... <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just a combat round, and there's still, like... 12 other parts of this game. But it's honestly, like a, seeing, like a quick it, seeing it, it's so easy to understand. If you yeah. if you just like look at it and do it and play a couple rounds, like you're like, oh, I understand totally how this works. It's just like, it's just one of those things that's not easy to explain with words. There's not just like a button you can press that's like a quick like key reference guide. Um, you don't it, really need it. it. It does give you tips on, the, on every loading screen, which is good because that's my biggest complaint is the load times are long. And in general, like menus will lag a lot. Sure. Oh, I haven't, but, I haven't noticed that. Okay. I, I, it has evened out a little bit since the initial launch because I played it day of when it launched because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, cool. That, that's neat. And I decided to give it a go. But on the loading screen when searching for a match, like it definitely it cycles through tips and it's like it'll give you like a little diagram that's like this is what purple attacks do against every other type of attack. Kind of like, 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 like a lot of video games do. Just right. Just like, yeah. But like it's helpful because it's keep it keeps reinforcing. Especially like remember, like, you like remember the the mechanics, right? Especially yeah. since on top of that, there's like burn, paralysis, confusion, poison. All of those do very specific, different things in this game. Um, it tells you, yeah, it's you have to play for a couple of hours, like including the tutorial. But like giving a couple games a go since they can't be longer than ten minutes is not too much of a time investment and like if you just play a couple matches you'll start to get the hang of what works how and so far i'm really liking it the actual gameplay is pretty fun mm -hmm. definitely a pay to win element because you can get better you can figures. Buy the figures yeah you can mm -hmm. just get better figures if you buy them but like me and kels were discussing we've only played a little bit and we both have like pretty so many gems pretty comparable <laughs> decks yeah um like i have something that works and beats players often like it i am at i have a deck that is like a comparable level to some of the higher decks out there it's not perfect but like working with what i got it's good sure is it engaging yeah. enough that you see yourself like playing it continually like for like a couple months um yeah i'll log in every day to get the bonus and i'll like play a couple matches every day because they have dailies mm -hmm. and there's like a whole daily system where you like you have three dailies and then you have a special mission that you can unlock after you beat 10 dailies. It's there's so many layers of things that happen in this game, both in gameplay and just like user interface. It's uh it's engaging and I would recommend you at least try it cuz trying it for free is no big deal. Plus there's a single player mode that you can just battle through AI battles and that's like gated through an energy meter like a lot of uh single player like those like wait to play kind of things. Right, but like at the start I I was able to go like it recharges while you're playing. You don't right. have to turn the app off for it to recharge and it recharges pretty quickly. So like, yeah, I got, I was like, okay, I'm done with this romp through the single player for now before my energy meter even hit halfway. Right. So like they're pretty liberal. Yeah. It, and it's, it's the reason I like it a little bit better than I liked shuffles system is because um, you can just like at a certain point you stop getting rewards for playing for a day. Like mm -hmm. it, you're, it's like you've gotten all of the rewards you can for this day, but you can still just play matches and continue to play yeah. um, and not get any rewards for it, which is cool because in Pokemon shuffle, like if you're out of plays, it's like, well, I'll come back in a half an hour. And oh yeah. Like, like but it, I want to play now. Yeah. It doesn't gate you <laughs> from playing the game aside from single player and you have to play pretty excessively to actually to like hit the wall mm -hmm. um but like why would you play single player anyway like it's it's playing against ai is frustrating because ai is stupid <laughs> but like when you're playing against a real person it's like oh i can actually use some strategies and the ai is not going to just do something dumb and ruin my strategy yeah it's uh 
it's pretty fun. Uh, I know uh, Jaywitz has been playing it a lot. He got up to master rank, which is like twenty three hundred. Jeez, wow! I'm at like fifteen hundred right now. Yeah, same here. He's been he's been going hard. He's been like actually playing and get like going in. I've Honestly, just been casually it playing. seems it seems like really fun, and I'm like very like enticed to play it. But my main problem is that Fire Emblem Heroes comes out tomorrow, <laughs> and it's just like. It's done. Like that's not. Yeah, rest in peace. It's over. Like rip. Like I, I can't not play the Fire Emblem game, you guys. I, I apologize to anyone th who thinks I should be better than that, but not today. Fire Emblem's too good, you guys. I mean, who's really who's gonna who's gonna say that? You're right. That's silly. I can't. Yeah. I won't even be able to hear it if they say it. You could say it right now out loud to yourself while you're listening to this. I still can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> even if you tweet at at Alex hashtag I said it, he still won't have heard you. Technically, I won't hear it. Uh, hashtag quiet. I have more Poke Week stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, you got one more Poke Week thing sitting on your wrist, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I finally got my Pokemon Go Plus. My pre-order, I pre-ordered it like months and months ago, and it was like, well, whenever it comes available again, we'll give it to you. And let me tell you, I got it because it's like twenty nine ninety nine. Like I was like, you know what, that's a little expensive, but like it's fun, and I should you have don't one. Have to because, justify. Oh, 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 but no, you know what else is cool? My mom texted me a picture. I didn't even show you this. Oh, my mom texted me a picture this week and she was like, I finished your costume. Whoa. My Pokemon Go costume is done. Your oh, I'm going cosplay? to show it to these two, these two gems of men right here next to me. <laughs> gems of men? Um, and that, everybody that else, everybody like else is just gonna name. have to is just gonna have to wait. Oh, it's great. It looks just it looks exactly like it just looks exactly like the avatar like it, from the thing. Like the avatar. That's and awesome. it's great. I can't wait to wear it. And now I have my Pokemon Plus to go with it. And the Pokemon Go Plus is very worth it. I I was skeptical, but it is worth it almost alone for the battery power you save because it can run the app in the background. So like I've been sitting here doing during this podcast and I think I've caught two Pokemon and like I didn't even have to do anything. Wow. Like the app's just running in the background, not draining my battery. I just click my wrist every time it beeps and I can engage with people and I don't have to be looking down at my phone to play the app and then Later on, I can just go back and be like, well, what did I catch while I was sitting here? That's great. Yeah. Any chance that we'll see it at Animation on Display 2017? Actually, um, you can guarantee that, kid. Kid? What's I don't know. It? What? <laughs> uh, Alex and I are going to a, um, a... It's in Santa Clarita, right? It's in Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Which is like up by San Jose. It's... Uh, the big version. It's March Clarita. 18th and 19th. We're going to be there. Uh, it's Animation on Display. AODSF.org. It's a great convention. Mm. We'll be there. Gerard will be there. And um, I will be in Pokemon Go cosplay. Yeah, it's going to be dope. Um, but uh, is there anything else? Any other Pokemon stuff? We've, we're have we almost finally done. Like, probably by the <laughs> time you hear this, we'll have finally beaten Pokemon Sun. I won't have. <laughs> Jimmy will not have done that. Uh, but we I, will. I, I did all right. I went pretty far. What do you mean? You, but what do you mean? Like, as if you are never going to go back? I mean, I haven't touched in a week. That's not that long. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, okay, the thing is, I've been... Uh, for those of you who don't know out there, I am the editor on the decks, but I also do editing work for several other YouTubers. Several of them Pokemon YouTubers, and uh, I've been editing for Jaywitz for like a year now. Um, so I've pretty much just been using his Let's Play as like a surrogate play through the game for <laughs> myself. You just he, feel like you're there? Yeah, my, my plan was, originally when he started, was I'll beat the game before I start his so I'm not spoiled and after I started like going along with his he he and I are pretty like-minded so watching him go through the game is like practically good enough for me right um but like I'm glad that I got to play what I got to play um a few like you know surprises here and there that I didn't know about like such as Ribambi um tragic tale of the the cutie fly that I just had in my party <laughs> just for a pokédex entry through experience share and then it evolved and I was like why didn't I put this on my team <laughs> um also shout outs to both Cribrawler and Chargebug just not evolving until you get to a spot later in the game and you have to level them up there yeah, get wrecked. yeah that's very, real very dumb Cribrawler's so low of stats yeah but what he evolves into is so funny it that it's worth the payoff. I mean, I, I haven't, I, I know what it's called, and I think I've seen a, a blurry picture of it, but like, I'm like defiantly still clinging on to some, <laughs> some essence of like, no, don't spoil me, but like, like I don't, it's hashtag, been long enough. Hashtag evolve that crab. It's so far away. You, it's, you, you can do it. I believe in you. 
Evo de Crabo. I believe. Evo de Crabo. Evo, Evo de, de Crabo. Crabo. What is that? I don't know. I was just trying to make a fun thing. Also, we, yeah. While I'm on the subject, let's just talk about for one second. In fact, I'm just going to talk about it for one second. <laughs> that Charger Bug can learn X Scissor, and Charger Bug cannot learn Leech Life. Charger Bug being a bug what? Yeah. who charges, who saps energy, cannot yeah. learn Leech Life. It would be. I, I think they probably did it because it would make him too good. But they don't do that with other Pokemon that some, can just learn good ass moves. <laughs> some Pokemon, some Pokemon can't. Some Pokemon yeah, Leech can. Life though. Um, Leech Life is so cool. Yeah, it is very cool. And speaking of cool, fun things, let's jump into the news. Welcome to the news, darlings. I was a little too long on that one. It's okay. Um, gave me some time to recover myself because Wallace just completed uh, his objective for the day, which was to fart on everybody. He in did the next crew. <laughs> He got me like an hour ago. Yeah. He roasted me. He I is, thought it was so cool uh, that he was cuddling up to me while we were doing the podcast. And then he's like, nah, dude. Yeah, yeah. it's rank. It's bad. It's pretty bad. He, he only eats one thing and it's like a protein filled, like, Dog food. I mean, it's dog food. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> um, it's guys, dog food. We've been we've been off the air for about two weeks now, and in that time, the Pokemon Bank update went live, which oh, yeah. adds uh, bank compatibility with Pokemon Sun and Moon, and also updates the Poke Transporter for the ability to send Pokemon from the virtual console versions of Green, Red, Blue, and Yellow to Pokemon Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the uh, mat of the update, what did you write there? What is that supposed to say? Um. I don't know. I'm, I don't have it in front of my eyes. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> point is, you have to re-download the entire uh, program again instead of patching it, but that's that doesn't matter that much. I guess uh, because of the scope of the update, because it's like adding a whole new... Yeah, it's like, like a huge deal. Uh, but if you use Pokemon Bank this year, you can pick up a special Z crystal for Mew called Munium Z until October 2nd, 2017. That's plenty of time, uh, which lets him do his Z move, which is called like Genesis, Genesis Supernova. Yeah, Genesis Supernova. It looks really awesome. And in addition, all Pokemon transferred from the virtual console games have their hidden ability when transferred. So watch out for that no guard guillotine Machamp. Ooh, ouch! He's a Ooh. he's a buster, <laughs> uh, but you can't use like, him in uh, that you can't, can't be legal. You no. can't use him in VGC <laughs> anyway because he's not born and bred in because Alola, he's broken. But still, <laughs> right? But still, but still, get wrecked. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Shoutouts to uh, free for all battles, just going crazy with that. <laughs> um, or what are they called? Battle royals? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, those that's crazy. But I know I know a lot of us were worried about like how the ability situation was going to go mm. from Gen One. The answer is all of them are going to be hidden. Very cool stuff. Yeah, that's also, cool. Also, apparently, what I'm hearing is that uh, Pokemon transferred from the Virtual Console versions can be shiny, and it's determined by their attack <coughs> EV or something. It's possible. I have no idea. I, I heard that you should not try and transfer missing though. No. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's like I. You know. I think. Apologies if you're in this camp, but I think uh, the the typical person would be like, I should. Oh no, that'd probably be a bad idea. So yeah, I feel right. like if you have some a little bit of brains, you don't want to transfer a glitch. But don't even try it because don't even try I think, it. It, don't I think it. people are like finding Corrupting glitch. Themselves. Yeah, there's like glitches going on. So don't so don't even try. I don't even know if that is like a confirmed thing, but like don't do it anyway. Probably right. safe. Right. 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 Be safe. Do you um, think that, um, well, originally, uh, shininess was determined by IVs. Do you think that is true because it's the virtual console dude version? Well, but you can't well, get shinies, can't get in, shinies Gen 1. in Gen 1. Right. But, so maybe, like, actually, could you transfer up Pokemon hmm. from Gen 1 to Gen 2 and they'd turn shiny? Mm. I, don't, that a thing? I don't know. I see. Yeah, I don't think you could do that. I don't I, think you could I, transfer. Well, it must, I don't know. From Gen 1 to Gen have, 2, yeah. Did they have the individual machine. values in Gen 1? Not at all, right? But they did they in did. Gen two. They did have individual. They did. So in then it then it must be possible because Gen one to Gen two, the shiny system or Gen two, the shiny system was based on IVs. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess I, you must be able to. There, you. I guess it would be plausible. I'll say that. Also, if if my if me claiming that you they did have individual values individual values in Gen one is wrong. Apologies, but I distinctly remember I had the guide for red, blue, and yellow, and they had this page at the start that was like remember. Even two of the same Pokemon are not going to be the same strength, and it just showed like two Pidgey with different stats, and I right. was like, "Oh, okay, okay." So they must have had something it, along those lines. If it it's wasn't individual that. values, it was some other it, thing that it, determined. It, it, it existed, but it was just a different system, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, it's tight that they like actually like made it kind of like a reward to catch Pokemon from Gen One and put them into the bank. And yeah, you yeah, get, it's like, very cool. Yeah. An ability one. Um, 
Speaking of rewards, the third Pokemon Sun and Moon Global Mission starts uh, January 31st, which is a couple days ago. Lasts all the way through Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, to participate, register in the Festival Plaza and trade Pokemon through the GTS. Uh, that's all you got to do. The mission goal is to trade one million Pokemon. That's a lot, but it's a lot easier than a lot of the other things that we've been doing. Right. So here's how it works. I think this time, I don't know, like we failed the last two pretty hard. But uh, I don't know if it's possible. to that. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But the prizes are 200 FC for failure. So even if we fail, you should sign up because 200 FC is like a lot. It's fair. And 2,000 FC if you succeed. Oh. Mm -hmm. So even if you personally did five trades, which gets you a bonus rare candy, which is the maximum amount of trades that you have to do, like... Or, you, yeah. Like, like, I mean, minimum, you could do, I mean, you could do like one trades, if you want, but like minimum amount of trades to get the rare candy is five. Mm -hmm. But even if you just do that and you hit and we as a whole hit a million, you win. You still get 2000 FC. Exactly. And if we get two million, everybody in the world who signs up gets a friend ball. Which is fun. Which is like. But, you know, I think that people use the GTS a lot more often than like some uh, like the island scan feature. You know, right. Like, which I'm was using the last that competition. GTS all the time when so, I'm yeah, trying to trade and stuff, you know, when I'm like breeding Pokemon and stuff like that. Yeah. So I feel like that one is a feature that's more used and more commonly like known and used. And so like all you got to do, go to your festival plaza, turn that on, like say like I want to be participating and then just trade like you normally would. And then you're in. Right. And if global missions aren't your main thing, the February battle competition is pretty exciting. It's the first uh, international challenge of the 2017 season. It's a double battle format with a Alola Pokedex only, no Megastones. Uh, and Jimmy, check it out. The participation prizes are Mawalite and Beedrillite. It's like literally made for Jimmy. <laughs> so this is a pretty good get. Register starting February 16th until the battles begin February 24th. And there is some information about uh, more Megastones that aren't available in Alola being released through this manner. They basically so said that this is how they're going to put out Mega stones that you don't have. Right. And this is just participation. So like even if you don't want to do this, just do one battle, quit, and then you've got it. Yeah. You know? Uh how dope would it be if that they if they were like, this is how we're gonna release Mega Stones, and they just did, you know, all of them over the course of like, you know, five, six months or so. Sure. And then suddenly, like, wait, they were like, This is the last one that was like that's all the Mega Stones and you have them in your game, and they're like doing one more and it's got like new mega stones that would oh. be the thing. crazy that would be that would really be cool. so tight <laughs> don't put cool ideas like that what in if my they head? were just like yo the prize for this one for participation is uh scraftyite 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 whimsicite i put that in my mechanical Whim pencil Whimsic and for a site oops whimsicite my favorite pokemon already has a mega stone <laughs> Wow. Why, why are you like smug about that? Technically mine too, Scizor. That's true. Yeah. Good job, guys. Yeah. Too bad, Jolteite. What? Sorry. I mean, it's all right. My Jolteon <laughs> is already cool enough on his own. <laughs> Dang. Uh, all right. This week, the QR team feature and the friendly competition feature became usable in Sun and Moon. Pretty crazy. Cool. Yeah. Players can create a QR code to share their battle teams with others to try out. Huh. Pretty crazy. If your team is used a lot, your player rank will go up, allowing you to put more QR teams out. Friendly competitions can be either local or online, uh, which is a new thing. It's basically just like build your own tournaments mm -hmm. uh, with rules the players can set, and you can also implement downloaded rule sets that you've gotten. Uh, competitions need a minimum of 20 players and expire after one day if not enough people participate. Uh, you can only use these features if you are connected with the Global Link account, which you had better be, my God, what's taking you so long? Do it. <laughs> you should do that. It's, um, it's check this out. Complicated and not intuitive. Check this out. Things you should do. <laughs> Things you should do. Pay attention to Wolf Glick. Pay attention to Aaron Zhang. Pay attention to Marcus Stather. Pay attention to a bunch of different people that are like sort of like Pokemon people. Did you say Marcus's last name weird? I don't think so. I thought it was Statler. I don't think I said it wrong. I thought you said Stather. Maybe I. I don't know. Never mind. I have Sorry. an ear infection. Okay. Pay attention right, to Stantler. Right. I can't hear myself. Pay attention to Stantler. Andrew Stantler. <laughs> um, Andrew Stantler his name's Marcus uh, <laughs> anyway uh, they're probably going to be sharing their codes for their teams or maybe just some teams that aren't their real teams I know that Aaron Zhang definitely is because he like has already tweeted about it like hey I'm going to be doing this yeah uh, <laughs> and also friendly competitions hang out on our Dex Discord which you can find if you're watching this on YouTube in the link in the video like right below this you can join our Discord we're going to be ha having Pokemon competitions soon we're going to announce more about that soon so get in there 
hang out and have a good time. Yep, Woo. it's going to be a fun thing. Uh, also, uh, there's a second chance Genesect event that's live in Europe and North America until February 28th. Uh, in Europe, the code is Genesect 2016 for some reason. Well, because I, it was a 2016 event. I, but I, just I, remember that you don't type 2017. Well, I mean, you just won't get it if you type 2017. Right. Uh, and then in North America, the code's Genesect 20 for the 20th anniversary. Uh, so go get your Genesect if you didn't get Genesect, because why wouldn't you want Genesect? Wait, where is it on Mystery Gift? Uh, yes. Yeah, Mystery Gift, but it's only in XY and Oros. Yeah, it's uh, the second chance oh. Genesect event from last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just throw that on the pile of parcels full of Pokemon that I still haven't obtained. The pile in... of parcels full of Pokemon is like yep. a tongue twister. <laughs> Uh, we already covered Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Co-Master, Pokemon. Pokemon Duel pretty heavily. Um, so that's all good. Yeah, I it's feel good. like we don't need to like, recap Try it out. that. Download it. Pokemon so for, Shuffle yeah. is getting Alola Pokemon uh, on both mobile and 3DS starting in the spring. We don't know much more about it yet, uh, but that's coming in. I mean, in. there's not really much more to that. They're probably just going to start adding Alola stages in there, um, but I still am too butthurt about it to go back. So It's okay. You don't have to go back. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Uh, Pokemon Go was released in South Korea, uh, along with Korean language support for the game Pokemon Go. Cool. Uh, and there have also been some Pokemon Go Plus connectivity patches and minor fixes released, but nothing like super sexy has been happening since we last spoke. No new like huge events or anything about. I got an email about the like Gen Two Pokemon yeah, again. Yeah, I did yeah, too. Yeah, I did too, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm excited!" And then I like looked at it and I was like, "Wait a minute, what? what? It's like Why when Grubhub gives you a coupon <laughs> and then it's like for new customers only, and you're like, "Why?" I look. I'm gonna just rant for a minute, yeah, because <laughs> I really truly hate this. Yeah. this. It's it's true. It's it's reasonable. I get excited every time that I open. It. It's like here's fifteen dollars off your order because it's summer, and you're like tight. I use Grubhub all the time. I would love to get fifteen dollars off my order, and then it's like on first order only over fifteen dollars, and you're like, why? Would I got I... on this. I got on this mailing list by signing up for Grubhub, and then <laughs> you send me coupons that are like tricks in the subject header. And then I can't use any of the coupons and you want me to tweet it out in anger so that somebody else can get a deal and you can get a new customer. That's shady. Don't do that, Grubhub. You're bad. Bad, bad, bad. If you work for Grubhub and you're listening to this, Stop write it. an email to somebody. There's Tell no somebody point in sending like yeah, there's no point in like sending people like new customer coupons if they've had the app and have been using it consistently. It's literally for like shady and dishonest, and the fact that you don't reward me for using it means I'm gonna use Postmates and DoorDash every time. So don't do that. Anyway. Also, also, Grubhub doesn't even accept PayPal. That's right. Whereas Ooh. Yelp Deliver or whatever it's called. Yeah. There's like a Yelp one that yep. does use PayPal, which is way more convenient. Yeah. I don't understand. It's just, you know what? Send me a real coupon for once, Grubhub. I tried to talk to them on Twitter one time and they were like, please go to the DMs. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I will not go to the DMs. I don't want like myself to get handled. This isn't a selfish thing. This is a you're doing bad business thing. Anyway. Hashtag thanks, LunchCast. Yeah, hashtag <laughs> LunchCast. I'm very serious about my meals, you guys. Anyway, uh, just a few more things and then we'll get on to emails. Uh, right now on PokemonCenter.com, some darling disguised Ditto plushies and keychains are on sale. If you don't know what a disguised Ditto plushie is, that means that it's a Ditto, but it's in the form of another Pokemon, but it still has Ditto's face. It's pretty great stuff. It is really good. Uh, they're, they're always good. Movies. Yeah. Plus, it's February. A new line of Valentine's Day merch is currently available. Uh, it has Pikachu, Eevee, and all the Evolutions. Not all of them, but of them. some of them. Few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a great Slowpoke shirt. Which right. is red and has a heart on it, but says Happy New Year on I it. I might yep. just get it. I might just get that shirt. It's so cute. Yeah, it's so dumb, but it's <laughs> great. Uh, and there's also uh, Valentine's cards that have pins attached to them, which is great. Uh, especially if you want to, like, go to work. And or, like, you're still in high school and, like, want to pass Valentine's out to your friends. That's, a little, that, that's a little expensive for that, but. I'm, I'm, well, I'm just sad. Well, no, it's not too bad. You get four in one pack, and, like, you can just do it to your best friends. You know, you know? One time, I had to buy gum for the whole class because I gave somebody a piece of, piece of gum, uh -huh. and I had to have enough for the whole class. Uh huh. Can you? Yeah. Is that legal? Uh, they can't I think legally force you to buy something. They can't force me to buy it, but they wouldn't let me give the person the gum unless I gave gum to everyone. That's silly. Did you buy the gum for everybody? Yeah. Wow. It's like cost Alex like is like the king of like defiance. So. Like if they're gonna if they're gonna <laughs> trap him into like if they're gonna be like well you're gonna have to buy it for everybody he'll be like fine I freaking will I will buy it for everyone and then he'll go and do it. Real talk, I I failed a math class in college one time because the teacher was teaching like wrong stuff, and I was like this is wrong, and he was like get out, 
and I left and I never came back. Dang. Yeah. Uh, and then I reported him and then nothing happened. Um, <laughs> Great. Finally, last bit of news. This is actually really cool because it looks really cool. A special Pikachu yellow new Nintendo 3DS XL will be released in North America on February 24th, 2017 for $199.99. This is the same one that was released in Japan last year. It has a cute Pikachu decal on the front cover. It's yellow, and it's probably one of the last special 3DSs ever now that the Switch is coming out. So get hype on that. It's a really good one. If you it's ever, cute. It's pretty cute. If you missed that Pikachu XL from a little while back and you're like butthurt about it, you could go back and get this one. It's a new 3DS, so you can play Xenoblade on it and you can play Super Nintendo games on it. So it's going to yeah, be cool stuff. Like, an, I really. It's a new 3DS, so you can play uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon on it. And when you get into a double battle against the CPUs, your frames will only drop to around 15 per second. <laughs> yeah, as opposed uh, to like two. As opposed to like two on the regular. Yeah, we're capturing our Let's Play of Pokemon Sun on the original 3DS. Ooh, every Ooh. double battle is just like, oh. Yeah. Sometimes it's you know rough. what? I think that I think that is probably capturing on uh, old 3ds too because he yeah. has a loopy card. It's hard to get. It's hard to get a capture device put onto. You. I mean, it's just expensive and it's hard yeah. because like not a lot of people do it. You can do it through Katsu Kitty sometimes. Yeah, I'll but like it. that's only sometimes, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Um, but that's it for the news. So if you guys have anything that you guys want to weigh in on about the news or any of our opinions about the news, you can send those opinions to thedexcast at gmail .com. That's T H E. D E X C A S T at gmail.com. And we'll read those emails next week uh, during uh, the segment that we're about to jump into right now for this week, which is the Fancers segment. Fancers. Da 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 da. Fancers. Da 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 da. Great. Great. So, this is the fan mail segment. This is the Fancers segment. If you haven't listened to this podcast before, this is where we read your emails. Last week, we were talking a lot about the Switch. We did like a sort of little like bonus episode it was like right after the uh sort of like big press conference for the switch and mm -hmm. we learned a lot more about the system i pre-ordered one right away and i pre-ordered a bunch of uh software for it i never do this so i'm very excited mm -hmm. uh i did get a i did get a wii u and a ps4 on the day that they came out but i had nothing to do with pre-ordering them like the ps4 was a gift and the wii u i like Somebody offered me, they were like, I'm standing in line and I have the ability to get you one. Do you want one? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But this time, this time I jumped on Best Buy. I got the pre-order. I did everything. Uh, hashtag Team Neon. Let's go. Team um, Neon all day. Because I'm going to buy the other. The colors? You got the colors then? Is yeah, that, I got the colors one because I want to buy the opposite. So that I can have like a red one or a blue one if I want. Nice. Ooh. Or if you get one. You yeah, I'll probably get one. Yeah, like. Especially with Pokemon comes out on it. Yeah, we could do like red and blue. It'd be cool. Aww. Anyway, uh, we talked a little bit about that. So I don't know if, how many people responded to that, but we have some uh, today. So please send in those responses to the dexcast at gmail.com. And we're going to jump in with a email right now from Fiona that's called Nintendo Switch's Online Games. Hi, Alex, Kells, Jimmy, and Wallace, the real-life lily pup. I have a question about the Nintendo Switch's online games. The Switch seems perfect for me since I'm a busy person that cannot play games leisurely at a television, television screen. Television but screen. Television screen. <laughs> <laughs> but I have concerns about the way Nintendo is releasing the amount of games that you can buy online for this console. I'm hoping to buy the Advance Wars series, Final Fantasy Tactics, and other older Whoa. games that are in Whoa. Nintendo's Tactics. library. However, one of my friends says that they would only be adding one game a week to the online shop and that the online shop only has SNES games on it so far. Is this true or will they be taking all the games from the Wii U's online store already, making them playable on the Switch, and will be adding a game a week from that? Thank you for your time, Fiona. P.S. I call my guinea pig Pollux my Alolan Radicate sometimes. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there has not been any official information about how old games are going to work on the switch other than rumors that you're going to finally be able to buy them for good yeah um also i don't think that we have any concrete information that confirms or denies the library of it though Correct. i will say that uh on the wii u you could still access the wii virtual console from the wii from from the wii u so like i i own paper mario uh, for N64 on my Wii U, Good despite choice. the fact that it's not on the Wii U Virtual Console, it is on the Wii Virtual Console. Well, it is now. Uh, okay, well, it wasn't a while yeah. ago. Yeah. But like 
in order to play it on the Wii U, I have to access the Wii emulator in the Wii U and then go through that to the virtual console right. menu in that. But it's still plausible. So I'm thinking I don't I don't think they're going to have virtual console for the Wii or the Wii U. But that's a lot of like games to like suddenly not have available on a Nintendo system. Mm-hmm. I, it would like okay, here's the thing. Saying some saying the thing I'm about to say usually doesn't matter to Nintendo, but like they would be just throwing away a ludicrous amount of money by not putting those games that are already ported it's over true. to the Switch. It's true, but, but at I, the same time, Mario is still the best selling game on the system and they can just release it in like a month and still make as much money. I realize that, but I'm saying like it I don't it would be beneficial to them to just launch this and have like, yes, here's a legacy Game Boy Advance lineup. Here's yes. a legacy uh, Game Boy lineup. Here's, you know, yes, Super I Nintendo, agree with blah, you. blah, blah. Like, I hope that they do that. I agree with you 100%. I wouldn't be like livid if they didn't, uh, but I am interested. The thing that I am interested in is, and this is another rumor that's been floating around just today, actually, uh, that a president of Nintendo sort of mentioned that it's going to be like, he mentioned the price in yen, but it's like somewhere between like seventeen fifty and thirty dollars per year for the online service, which is really good for. An which is pretty. Service. I mean, yeah, granted, fine. Nintendo. I mean, Xbox and Sony are only like fifty or sixty dollars a year, so it's like not like none of them are like prohibitively expensive. Uh, but uh, a thing that is like simultaneously dope and kind of crappy is that in the fine print on the Switch site when it was released during the press conference, uh-huh. there was talk about like that every month, you know how like PS Plus is a thing and Xbox Live Gold is a thing? Yeah. There was talk that like every month you would have access to a game for NES or SNES that had been developed to have online multiplayer. Oh. Yeah, so hmm. that's cool, but... The rumblings were that once the month is up, it's like another game and you don't have access to the other game again unless you buy it, which like I I'm there's like no reason why I should be expecting them to to just give you a game to give me a game for free other than that Sony and Xbox already do it. But Nintendo's first party library is so much more valuable than Mm. than either of the uh, those other companies libraries and Mm -hmm. a lot of the games that they give out aren't first party you know that's fair and so i think for nintendo like it's a business decision of like well we want to respect these games because that's like the thing that nintendo always kind of like puffs their chest out about right is that like you don't return a nintendo game it's always 50 dollars. like any nintendo game that you see like like uh pokemon like only goes up in price like yeah you know that kind of thing so uh, that's fair um I didn't hear about the multiplayer aspect of the of the ported games that you get every month. I did I I did hear that you weren't going to keep them past the month. Um and so since it was like NES games, I figured it was like, oh, they're going to give you Legend of Zelda, they're going to be like play Zelda so that you know, like so that you understand the legacy. Which was kind of I, I thought was like that's fine. Most of those games aren't going to take a month to finish anyway. Right. I would love to just like save state my way through Zelda. Yeah. Um <coughs> but I, I will reiterate. Once in a while. I will reiterate. Nintendo, give me Zero Mission, give me Metroid Fusion, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced, Advanced Wars, uh, which are already all available on the Wii U. Right. Give me those on the Switch so that I can take those and have this super high res Game Boy with me. Where I would I love that. I honestly, I love playing Super Nintendo games like while I'm like, just like sitting around. Give me the. All three DKCs. On, Yo, that'd be great. On, I would love to play those. I would act like... I play Metroid Fusion on my 3DS like all the time. Wow. Must be nice to do that. I'm Mr. lucky Nintendo that, Ambassador. <laughs> Dude, hey, that's a it's, it's a small it's a small reward for spending $80 more than everyone in America did on the 3DS, but I'll take True it. that. I'm I'll, just salty that like the port of Metroid Fusion onto the 3DS exists... And is finished and, and is, have, and and is can't there. Have it. And I just, I can't even pay them for it. Is it, they won't is even it still, allow me is to it buy still them. not available? No. Are there not Game Boy Advance games? No. That's so funny. I have like F Zero. I have Mario Kart. I have Minish Cap. I have Metroid 2. <laughs> the <laughs> Minish, Return of Minish, Samus. Minish Cap is pretty good. Minish Cap is a pretty dope. Uh, that, is, that is one. Yeah. I, I need to get around to playing that's that. That's on Wii U as well. But point is. I'm with you on this. We want these things, but nothing official has been there except that you get a free game a month and that's going to have online multiplayer. I don't know if that means like Zelda's going to have a leaderboard and that's it or it's going to be like all two-player games or what, 
but I don't really care because I'm pretty into that idea. I'm pretty into just like, I'm, I'm very much in early adopter mode with the Switch. I'm like, all right, I'm like all in on this. I bought this. I'm going to like try and look on the bright side and like see what the deal is with the Switch. That's kind sure. of my whole thing anyway, so whatever. But people always get annoyed that I'm like, but what about these positives? And they're like, shut up. The thing is bad. This is what I want to say. Yeah. No, it's, it's chill. It's chill. Yeah. That's like my whole online life, but whatever. Uh, thank you for that email. This next one comes from Cody, Pokemon Revival. Hello, Alex, Pokekels, Jimmy, and the ever-hungry Pupboy Wallace. He I just want to thank hungry. you for all the work you do on your show. <laughs> it has inspired me to get into competitive battling in Sun and Moon. Mm, Hell yes. Sick. I finally got my dope trip, trick room team ready for online battles, and it has been a blast. Bruxish and Vikavolt for life. Vikavolt. I really look forward to your competitive show. My question... What is your favorite new Pokemon for competitive battling? Mine is definitely Trick Roomed Crabominable. Anyway, sorry for the long email. Your librarian, Cody. Hashtag, I like them slow pokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, favorite new Pokemon for competitive battling? Mine is Muck for sure. Like, does that count? Alolan Muck? Yeah. Because that's new. I love Alolan Muck because he's so hard to take down. And I just, I, I'm a big fan of um, like, like bulk teams, bulk teams and teams that are like, like, they can take the hits and right. stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alolan Muck has been like my staple on my practice competitive team that I've been using on Showdown. Um, so that's like definitely my answer. My, my like, I always kind of liked Muck, but like Muck is now like in, he's like in my, in my top. <laughs> he's on the squad now. Yeah, he's on the squad. Love that. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go with <sighs> Mudsdale or mm. Tapu Lele. Which is weird because I never thought that I would like, I would like be like on the side of using legendaries competitively, but they really went the extra mile to like make everything balanced this time around. Like the yeah, Ultra the Tapus are really cool. Yeah, They're the useful. Tapus are like not too crazy, but they are buff, but like mm -hmm. they have weaknesses and like, you know, because they all have the same fairy typing, like in addition to whatever other typing they have, you can still kind of like counter them effectively no matter what. Right, right. And the ultra beasts are like strong in one area only each, so that they can they're kind of like culpable, like they're kind of like weak. It's tight. It's a good. Do you time. think that's why uh, Muck is so prevalent in the scene because he counters all the tapus? Yeah, but yes. also he's just he, a the total only, buster. His uh, his dark poison typing makes him only really weak to. Uh, ground too. yeah he's got stab right. knockoff and he doesn't take psychic damage he's a jerk yeah that's, yeah. What, that's what i'm saying because he, he's got the the stab poison for all of the tapus and can't take the psychic hit from lele yeah it's mm -hmm. crazy it's crazy that's he's neat. so he's so good and he's rainbow which uh -huh. is just cute i know that everyone's like he's supposed to be an oil oil slick but uh i'm going to forever see him after as plato after uh, after Misky tweeted that out of him like popping out of a little Play-Doh can. Also, like, like, isn't it sulfur pits too? There's like, I, there's there's these sulfur pits that somebody tweeted at me, and I was like, oh, that's so muck. I have no idea, but yeah, those sulfur pits that are like rainbow. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's neat when something like that happens, and you're like, well, they could have totally just made muck lava. And that would have been really easy, but they didn't do it. And this is cooler because they didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get that little muck vignette with the dude and his son. <laughs> so yes. funny weird. Stuff. Oh, you so know, during weird. during my moon playthrough, um, that that muck vi that Grimer and muck vignette, I I fought the dad with his with his Alolan muck with my Alolan Grimer. It evolved, and then directly after, I fought the son with his Grimer with my muck. Oh, that's so cool. And I just so felt cool. I was like really excited about it. I thought yeah. it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. As for me, I don't really have a, a pick for competitive since I don't know anything about the competitive scene since I'm halfway through the game. Sure. <laughs> but well, uh, then, I'll say Vikavolt. Because I'm sure he's good. He's tight. Yeah. Uh, I also want to just mention, I was watching Marcus uh, Stantler. <laughs> Marcus uh, Absol uh, was, was uh, streaming the other day and he, uh, he fought somebody with a palisand Mm -hmm. And the Palisand has water compaction, oh. which raises its defense sharply every time it's hit with a water move. And he hit it with his own, this was an opponent of his, hit it with a water shuriken from his own Greninja. Mm -hmm. And then it had a weakness policy on it. And so it got like three <laughs> boosts sharp boost. of sharp defense boost. And then it got a double boost, sharp boost on its attack and its special attack. And it healed that turn. Yeah, and it has that like healing move, so it's just like get wrecked. It's so crazy. Man, that's a buff boy. Yeah. Scary that, buff that's, boy. That's the kind of gimmicks that I'm into. 
Like, I love that. That's a very gimmicky strategy, but like I'm I'm about that. It's gimmicky, I'm trying to but pull it's, that it's, off with it's, the it's, Mudsdale and Mudsdale and Tucannon with Rock Blast, but like oh, because stamina. Tucannon can do a skill link, right? Um, and Rock Blast is like not super effective on on Mudsdale, but Tucannon is just like a little bit too like not defensive enough to like right. be able just to put rock off. blast on anyone and even if it hits him twice that Chinchino. he's just not gonna he's not gonna be penetrable after that yeah mm. uh i also use i love mudsdale because I, I love to do resto chesto with mudsdale right because they like take that damage mm -hmm. and then they get that buff and then they sleep and then they're like full health invincible it's pretty mm -hmm. cool stuff um but anyway thank you for that email uh this next one comes from Habanero Pepper. Ah. It's called A Cry Spicy. for Help. <laughs> hey, Alex Kells, Jimmy, and guest. I want to say thanks for the amazing podcast. It's like being with friends, except I don't have to interact, leave my bedroom, or take shower. <laughs> the podcast Ideal. is a perfect replacement for human conversation. <laughs> a powerful painkiller for loneliness. Wow. Now I can continue my lifestyle of sleeping all day and staying up till 6 a.m. I know how to talk to other people. But how would you? I mean, why would you? <laughs> but seriously, how could you? Please send help. Habanero Pepper. Well, thank you, Pepper. I'm beginning to believe that Habanero Pepper is a pseudonym for Lemony Snicket. Lemony Snicket. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I feel that same way about the Adventure Zone podcast. I, I will listen to it and I'll be like, these, I just, I like laugh along with it. And then I'm just like, I don't need to talk to anyone. I just can sit and listen to this for hours and hours. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I would say I do the same with Critical Role, though I watch it often when I'm working. So it's like, it's almost like I'm hanging out with friends and getting and being productive. But hey, it makes me feel happy that like we occupy that niche for you. Yeah. Because I definitely have things that occupy that niche for me. And so I'm Adventure glad Zone. that I can I can pass that forward. The Adventure mm -hmm. Zone podcast. Yeah. I'm, I love Brothers. it. I'm almost done with it. Yeah. I, like remember when last I like talked about it on this podcast? I listened to like 30 more episodes. I'm like almost <laughs> done. I think I only have like four more and then I'm caught up. And then I got to figure out what to do because then it's only going to come out bi-weekly. That reminds I'm, me that we need to talk about something after this podcast is wrapped. Uh oh Ooh. yeah it's gonna be tight um <laughs> but yeah i i appreciate the email as funny i mean i I'm, I'm assuming you're you're mostly joking but even if you're not we love you so don't don't worry <laughs> if this is if this is what it is we'll let, let's hang out we're hanging we're sending help what's right up? now yeah we're sending helps it. on the way hey how you get doing? snacks what's up uh all get right snacks. <laughs> this next one's from space cadet linian discord in harmony greetings next cast Su Pokemon sun and moon is awesome and everything but i just wanted to make a shout out to the dex's very own discord channel the peeps there are really awesome and the vibe is always pretty friendly. There's even an unofficial Elite Four for people to challenge on Showdown. Could be official. Get in touch. <laughs> it's really <laughs> something for everyone. Shout out to my main Squish Squish. Space Cadet Linian. P.S. No, it's not from Monster Hunter. I've used this for like a decade or more. Hashtag how is it now? Hashtag we're still cops. Hashtag blame Raven. Hashtag Squish Boys. Hashtag boom roasted. Uh, yeah. So this is, this, is, uh, this is one of the guys who... Uh, like is doing a lot of the RP that's going on on the Discord server. Mm -hmm. And I think just for fun, we're just going to put like an RP area so that everybody can go be Elite Four and give each other badges and stuff. But as far as like official uh, battling and stuff, head to the Discord anyway because in the next like few weeks to months, like a lot of cool official stuff is going to be rolling out. So, you know, don't worry. There's going to be, yeah. there's going to be a lot of stuff for people to do. But I do want to, I, I do think it's cool to give a shout out to the Discord. Because and you know, every time I every time I like have a theory in my mind about Pokemon or like I have something that I'm like, I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, wow, what about this? I always like pop onto the Discord and there's always like somebody there to like jive with me about it. Mm. Uh, actually, one of the lines from the uh, episode that's going to be coming out in uh, like a couple weeks where we talk about the intelligence of Pokemon, we had like that discussion in the Discord chat of like, how do we, how do we compare intelligence for smart Pokemon, you know? Mm -hmm. So like that was, that was really cool. And that kind of stuff that we talked about makes it actually into our episode production. Yeah. yeah. It's like tight. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Hashtag. Uh, thanks, thanks for going there. Thanks, and go Dexcord. there if you haven't. Thanks, Dexcord. Yeah. If you're yeah. watching this on YouTube, just jump into the description and there's a link there. It's permanent. It's permanent in invite. There are many rooms and... I think we did a, a chat room that was for the San Jose uh, championship thing. That right? was really fun. And we'll probably do that for future things. Like when Worlds happens, we'll uh, make like a Worlds chat room. That we're, yeah, we're, we can we literally do won't. it. Even if we're there, we can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Discord has a mobile app. Yeah. I can, one of us can just like have <laughs> headphones on their phone be and just on be the walk Discord. around. Yeah, we can take pics, put them up. It'll be cool. Just do it. Yeah. You're going to go in there. You're going to have a good time no matter what. We're going to... 
we're going to start doing some streaming that involves Discord. It's going to be a fun thing. And again, I don't want people to feel like they have to join. It's just like an optional thing. But mm -hmm. if you want to be part of the community, it's a fun thing. Um, but thank you for that email, uh, Linian. Though, Monster Hunter has been around for over a decade. Yes. Um, <laughs> not that I think that you... St I, I, not that I still we, think you took it from Monster you Hunter. at the same time that that is not a... Yeah, I just feel old. All end all. I just feel old now. <laughs> uh, all right. This next one is from... Um... I'm just going to go with R. I'm going to say it's from R. Okay. It's called Sao Paulo Internationals. Didn't we decide that we were just going to say the first name on all emails? Yeah, and but this, if you I don't, don't want not even name, a, I don't, I'm not even positive. I see. Yeah. Because sometimes it's the parent's first name. I see. And I just, I don't want to like start. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Hey there, Alex and Kells. I missed Jimmy in there. Guess Hi. what? He's here. I'm from Brazil, and I'm sending this email to tell you guys why these SP internationals being held here and getting that much attention is amazing. A few years ago, Nintendo officially cut all ties with the country, stopping to sell all games, systems, and merchandise here, and restricting access to the Wii U eShop with Brazilian accounts. Yo. The 3DS eShop is still up for some weird reason due to the high taxes. Oh. Okay. Restricting access to the Wii U eShop with Brazilian accounts, the 3DS, shop, the 3DS eShop is up for some weird reason, all of that is due to the high taxes. Mm. Ah. Because of that, not many people play Nintendo games nowadays. I literally know only one other person that owns a Wii U besides me. So the company was pretty much forgotten until the release of Pokemon Go, and the popularity from that died really quickly. After all that, I had pretty much given up on attending those sorts of events. But imagine my surprise when a single tweet from Serebii literally made me drop my phone in shock. I'm incredibly excited for the competition, and even though I know the chances of me getting anywhere far are nearly zero... Since I started playing competitively with Sun and Moon, I'm still practicing daily and building my team for it. I've never been more excited for an event in my life, and being surrounded by other passionate players and amazing players will be a dream come true for me. I hope you guys will be covering the event on Discord, and I'm really looking forward to chatting with you guys about it in there. I barely talk there because I'm shy, but that will be an important occasion. Anyway, sorry for the long and kind of messy email, and keep up the amazing work you've been doing. Hashtag thanks, Dexcast. Hashtag sorry for the long email. Hashtag I know it's not that long, Alex. It was a joke, geez. <laughs> Hashtag team Rowlet. Hashtag where is the battle show you promised. Hashtag sorry if it's already out. I didn't know when I wrote this. Hashtag later, man. <laughs> we just had to beat the game, dude. It's coming It's coming soon. There's yeah. a, there is so much involved with making a new show, especially like one to like schedule with other stuff. And like every video that goes up on our channel needs to be edited and... We both have multiple jobs. It's just like things have things have to go slow, but they will be here. Yeah, it's totally crazy. Um, and uh, just in case you're wondering, the uh, Sao Paulo uh, International Latin America Championships are going to be uh, April 21st to 23rd. Sick. So get hyped for that. And there will probably there will most likely be stuff about it going on in the Discord when it happens. It's a major right. event. It's an international, and yeah, like as long as we continue, like. All of, all of our plans that we have right now, and we're working on them much more than you guys think. We had a big team meeting the other day. We've added people to our team. Uh, it's it's going to be cool. So so hang tight. And uh, yeah, jump on the Discord. It's cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the Thank email. Yes. Thank you. Still like one or two more? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Feeling good? Feeling Gucci? Yeah. Uh, this next one is called Alex Appreciation, and it's from Dylan. <laughs> Remember, I choose these completely randomly. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm sending this email in without any knowledge on what you guys were talking about last week, and it'll probably be a while before I even watch this episode if it even gets read. I'm still listening to the last three, four months of podcasts because I cut out all Pokemon discussion for my life shortly after Sun and Moon were announced That's fair. so I could have the purest experience I could. Good on you. I seriously only knew the starters, legendaries, the fact that Trials and Z-moves exist, and a handful of Alolan forms when I started the game, and that's it, but that's not why I'm writing in today. I just got inspired to gush about one of my favorite people ever, Alex Coolman Miyamoto Fasciani. You were seriously an in inspiration for me, man. Your brand of comedy is amazing. Everything you say is gold, my dude. From discussing whatever with Jimmy and Kelly to encouraging Gerard to the trial of I Want to Be the Guy and your hijinks in the scary game squad, you have my sides hurting constantly. You also invented Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, some of the best game series of all time. Most of all, you're like the chillest dude ever. You take life as it comes, but still don't take crap from anyone. I live my life trying not to get the let the world get me down, and you are the pinnacle of that for me. Thanks for being you. Stay tight. That's from Dylan. Dylan, your check is in the mail. Thank you so much for doing that for me. I appreciate somebody he's, doing that. He's joking, answering my course. Craigslist. Answering my Craigslist ad for, no, for good though, emails. Though, if I may jump in, I, if I may jump in, Dylan, that's really sweet. And yeah. also, Alex, like 
I think you're really freaking funny too. Thank you. That's why I like you. Thank you. I and knew it wasn't reasons. my looks from the beginning. <laughs> Guys, come on. Uh, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, seriously, dude. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. Was really that. sweet. Uh, I, I really, I didn't, I didn't realize what the email was about until I read the description of the email. And then I was like, all right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> but thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, okay. <clears throat> this next one is called, this is the final email we're going to do for the day. It's called Weirdo Card Descriptions. And uh, it's going to be from Picnicker George. Hey. Alola, guys. Alola. First up, just know that by reading my email, you will have absolutely made my day. I'll be grinning for ear, from ear to ear if I hear it. Smiley face. Day made. Done. <laughs> I've Hashtag recently been getting really into Pokemon cards. It's just on the verge of becoming a problem, dude. <laughs> I know. And I recently opened a couple of Generations packs. The description on the card, Deancey, is weird, and I wanted to know what you think. It says... Open the magic door and a dream colored party will start again today. I'll teach you the secret password. Who? Start again? Magic door? What is up? What? Dancy? Also, the entry for Gulpin. When mom gets in the kitchen, the happiest things happen. I can feel my mouth watering. Also, what? please find attached a picture of the artwork. I tweeted to Kells and she agreed that it was, in fact, the best artwork in the whole of Pokemon. I love that card. That card, that's the, it's the one with the, with the it's Gulpin with the and the kid, and the kid bouncing yeah. the pencils on their nose. That's such oh, a that's cute, cute card. That's the very move, cute. The move <laughs> they're doing is called Starvin. Wait, read that dancey description again. Open the magic door and a dream-colored party will start again today. I'll teach you the secret password. Great. Crazy. I want to be in that party. Thank you, Five Nights at Freddy's, for that. That's like That's like, from the point of view of like, a static end screen from a, a cutscene in a JRPG or something. I mean, that sounds so exciting. I'm so happy she's going to teach me the password because, like, a dream colored party sounds like all right, sick. It you sounds guys are like really just like just all in go on do this. Acid. What? It, you guys are really just like all in on that? Like, you're just like cool with that? It seems I feel creepy. Like Diancy is like a trustworthy enough. It Pokemon. sounds like a party where everybody's going to go do acid. It sounds like a party where it's actually like someone gets murdered and the that's dark the brotherhood. party. <laughs> like you just, you just like thirty people go to the party and like no one. Ever leaves the party? Yeah, no that one was has ever seen the... again. Uh, <laughs> last, last thing. Here we go. Last thing. I really want to work later, man, into my everyday vocab, but it doesn't really work with a British accent. Try it. I dare you. Later, man. Later, man. Um, later, man. Later, later man. man. Oh, you know what you need to do? <laughs> it's not totally a British accent, but um, our 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 Dutch friend Hilda says later, man, a lot, and you can look at it and see it on her videos how she does it, and it sounds great. You just <laughs> you're just in love with Hilda. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Thanks Man, so much for the cast. No. My genuinely favorite part of the week is biking home from work on a late on late on a Sunday, listening to a new episode. I probably listen to old episodes of the podcast as much as I listen to the music. Oh, uh, listen to music. Omg. Hashtag thanks Dexcast. Have a cool day, guys. Picnic or George. Hashtag later man. Hashtag good day, sir. Picnic Hashtag George. it always has. Hashtag hope is always. Hashtag give and get whatever it is. Hashtag team Rowlett. Hashtag still fighting for team instinct. Give I remember and get some whatever of those. it is. I remember, I remember some of those. <laughs> I still get happy anytime someone t tweets at me. Hope is always. It makes me. It makes me happy and hopeful. But give and get whatever it is. Like I. I forgot about that one until you. You wrote that. So thanks. Thank you, George. Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, I think we could do one more. We're still just a little bit under an hour. I think we could like tip it right over the edge there. Let's Whoa. do it. It's been a, it's been a little bit. Hit you with the fake out. Hit you with the fake out. Hit That's me, me. With keeping you guessing. Out. Alex, appreciation week. Here we go. Flinch him away. Uh, all right. This one's from Sergeant Marine. Remember Yay. him? Yeah. Yeah. Totem Pokemon. Aloha, Alex, Poke Kills, Jimmy, and guest. Sergeant Marine is back, and I have been having a blast playing Pokemon Sun. Uh -huh. While everyone likes to say what Pokemon they want to have a Mega Form or a Lola Forms, I'd like to change that a bit. I would like to see DLC that includes new legendary totem Pokemon. Mm. Let's take, for example, Lugia as the ultra wormholes are closing. New ones are opening, causing these legendary Pokemon to be pulled from different regions. Lugia, being the trio master to Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno, calls upon their help as you try to send him back to his own region. Oh. Which legendary Pokemon would you like to see as a totem battle? Who would it support Pokemon be? Oh, hashtag yeah. hope as always. Hashtag charge for change. Hashtag later man. Mitch, <laughs> a.k.a. Sergeant Marine. Oh, this um, is a cool idea. Yo, Mew and Dittos, let's go. Mews and Dittos? Mew and Dittos? Mew and Imposter Dittos, let's go. <laughs> that would be very funny. Um, I, I I, mean, I would love to see the Reggie trio in any way, so, I mean, you could probably just make that Reggie Gigas, and it oh calls upon God, the Reggies. Oh my God, that would be so cool. Because the, the Reggies do canonically, like, team up in he's like that the one boss. movie. He's, <laughs> he's actually the boss of them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that would be so cool, and I love Reggie Gigas. I'd love to see something like Celebi 
and something like nature related or like ah, I don't know like little shaman bringing in like other like little like little grass types. I mean, technically, you could even just kind of <laughs> spin this the obvious way and do Hoopa, and it just yeah. calls other legendaries in. Yeah, kind of like it. Hoopa and how it just, like opened up those rings. Yeah, I, I mean, because like Hoopa could be. The not unbound version, it could just be like the little sweetie boy, basically like the weaker party, yeah. and it calls on like you know Reshiram and Rayquaza and stuff. <laughs> yeah. just all the pop crazy out of the boys. Sky. Yeah. yeah. Also, if you're gonna do Lugia and the birds, you might as well do Ho Oh and the dogs, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. cool. Yo, I love this. I want to know cool more about idea. this. More more totem ideas. More it, trials. It's like post game Oros, but like built for Sun and Moon. It's kind of cool. Unless I'm like stupid and I just don't know about this one thing. Go on. What are they building? In Alola. In Alola. There are so many buildings that are being made. Yeah. There's so many like plots of land that have nothing on them but have building materials on them. Yeah. And it, it's so cryptic and so exciting. Yeah. What do you think, Jim E? I. Not what could they be aside the from like future gym sites? <laughs> I'm just trying to um, use your pun. I mean, whoops, your name as a pun. <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. What oh, are you, you thinking, you're gyms? thinking gyms? I'm thinking gyms. Yeah, I think that's the obvious answer. Yeah. Which, like, yo, let's go. That'd Dude, be tight. That'd be great. But okay. what if it wasn't that? Then what? I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. What if, what if, what if, like, <laughs> all I got. what if in like a month they announce Pokemon Sun and Moon season pass? I and feel like, like what you just said, Jimmy, was like the epitome of all Twitter arguments is that like someone's just like, well, what about no. this? And you're like, and please expound on that yeah. because that's not an argument. <laughs> no, I'm just going to leave that word. <laughs> so dope. Anyway, guys, that's <laughs> it for this week's podcast. Jimmy, it's great to have you back, man. It's great to be back. I think we're going to, I think we're going to like do it this way from now on. It's pretty easy. We're trying yeah. to refine our schedule for filming days um, because, as previously mentioned, we all have multiple jobs and multiple yeah. things that we do in our lives. So, the, like, like, the like major reason why uh, it it wasn't for sure if I was going to be on the casts and why audio quality switched around rapidly was because we would get to the office and do most of our schedule, and like things would come up or things would get in the way, and we wouldn't be able to get to the podcast. Yeah. Right. And so then Alex and I would record it like a day later. Right. So, so now, so now what we're doing is we've got a schedule, like construction is done. We actually have a room where we go to record now. That's like never going to move. It's a good vibe. So, yeah. so, so we should be in this situation from now on. This is worked into our filming schedule permanently. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool sh sh stuff. Almost sh said the bad word, sh sh stuff. Okay. but I, now I don't have to edit it. Lucky me. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, guys, if you guys want to respond to anything that we've talked about here, if you guys if you guys want to weigh in with totem Pokemon, if you guys want to weigh in with speculation on what they're building in Alola, anything like that, please send those things into thedexcast at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-D-E-X-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, go join our Discord uh, in the description below. If you're not watching this on YouTube, go to our YouTube channel and go on literally any of our videos to check out our Discord. Discord link description mm -hmm. in the uh, in the description. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you for listening. <laughs> I'm Alex. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Polka Kills. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Later, man.